So in this segment, we're going to be talking about Wiley. I know it's a bit old. Um, this is one I missed the boat on, honestly, but it doesn't matter. So it's important to talk about this for not just um, you know, because of what Wiley did, but also the kind of uh, the ripple effect this may have on other people tweeting, um, I guess, racist or, you know, anti-Semitic or, you know, maybe even Islamophobic things. Um, so let's 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 have a listen to what Emma Barnett has to say. Emma Barnett, who is um, Jewish, her grandmother escaped from um, Auschwitz, I think. No, escaped from the Nazis in Austria. Um, so let's have a quick listen to what she had to say. If you haven't had a look at these messages, Jewish people are cowards. Do so here she's quoting Wiley, just just in case anyone um, like just to clarify that. Do something to me. I'm waiting. Jewish people act rough, but they hide behind the police. Who writes the laws? Who changes the laws? Who implements new laws? Who? What is the five percenters? Who are they all? Who runs the world? Who runs the banks? Who writes the law book? Who hides behind the police? Who owns the police? That was Wiley tweeting about Jews. I caught up with these messages. And so that's uh, Wiley, you know, I saw him trending on that day and I was like, oh no, as he sent for someone, then I realised, no, it's far worse. Um, and so, uh, let's see here, here we can get more of a flavor for it. So in fact, there are two sets of people. Nobody has really wanted to challenge the challenge Jewish and KKK. I mean, the KKK have not been a big force in a long time. Um, and they have been challenged and, um, you know, um, they were powerful, um, during I think the early 1900s, but they fizzled out, um, massively. I think since the uh, civil rights era and um, Jewish people. And so here we have some of the a bit of the taste of the um, anti-Semitism. So um, in prison, Jewish people are looked uh, get looked after differently to everybody else, um, differently to everybody else and hospitals and police stations. Jewish would do anything to ruin a, a black man's life. It won't come back. It won't work with me. I'm a savage. Um, when I wore the Jewish community, I do not lose trust. Ask John Wolfe. Uh, Jewish people, you think you're important. I'm too sick on you. And um, there are more stuff. Um, you know, if you work for a company owned by two Jewish men and you challenge the Jewish community in any way, of course you will get fired. And this this is kind of how stupid um, Wiley is. That, you know, he got into an argument with his, um, you know, people at his record label, the record label that he uh, works for, okay? His, um, you know, his managers or whoever's above him, um, they're Jewish. So he, instead of like just, you know, dealing with this stuff privately or even saying he's got an issue with his record label and these specific people for specific reasons, he targets all of them. You know, he targets all Jews, throws them under the same um, thing and, um, you know, talks about how powerful they are when um, I believe there are Ethiopian Jews, you know, in Israel who are, you know, being thrown out of the country. Um, are those people powerful, Wiley? Are they? And so if we look into this, Wiley's non-apology. So he goes, Wiley, Wiley, um, Wiley apology for tweets that looked anti-Semitic. So here we have the anti-apology. So, you know, when people say, oh, I'm sorry you were offended or I'm sorry that hurt you or I'm sorry you were hurt. You know, that's an anti-apology. Because what they really should say is, you know, my words were wrong. Um, I apologize. And what I said caused offense. And um, I was wrong for that. Instead of saying you were the one who felt bad, it's on you. You know, I'm sorry if it looked um, anti-Semitic to you. That's on you. You know, it's not my fault. It's not my intention. You got it wrong. That's kind of the anti-apology. I think um, uh, I'd have talked about Leafy doing, you know, the anti-insult was like, oh, is this guy retarded? Or maybe I, I, I don't know. I can't tell. And then they make you say it, you know, the thing. And so grime artist um wiley has apologized for generalizing about jewish people after being banned from social media in an interview with sky news the artist insisted i'm not racist my comment should not have been directed um to all jews or jewish people i want to apologize for generalizing i want to apologize for comments that that looked anti that were looked at, at as anti-semitic twitter had early but earlier banned his account you know they took an age um to do anything about it um twitter saying you know we're sorry and so he's saying, you know, I'm not racist, you know, I'm a businessman, my thing should have stayed between me and my manager, I get that. And if you had a specific problem with your manager, um, you should have spoken to him or said you have a specific problem with your manager on Twitter, you should not have targeted all Jews because it's a stupid thing to do. Just like if, um, you know, if I was, you know, a rapper, you know, somehow, um, and, you know, I had a problem with my manager, say he was, you know, black or a woman, you know, I wouldn't say all women are this or all black people are this. I'd say I have a specific problem for you with you for this reason. And that's not what Wiley did. And that's why it's wrong. Um, you know, um, however, the artist appeared in an interview to refuse to distance himself from anti-Semitic comments he posted on social media. You know, he had a really bad uh, interview with Sky and Sky didn't publish everything he said purely because it was 
according to them, it was that bad. You know, this guy who was who's known as the godfather of grime, you know, a guy who went after, um, you know, Stormzy and Ed Sheeran for doing music together that's not seen as quote-unquote grime, but also made music with Ed Sheeran twice, once where he featured on Ed Sheeran's um, number five collab um, EP or album, I'm not sure which one it was, or what, what it's defined as, and then he also made a song with Ed Sheeran. So I don't understand what, like, why this problem is. And... Um, you know, I just, I just don't get like what he was trying to achieve by doing this. And, um, you know, if we look at another person here, Nick Cannon also doing similar things, you know, Wiley saying that, you know, it, um, Israel and Palestine belongs to, uh, black people, not, you know, um, the people who live there, not the, um, you know, the Jews or the Arabs, it belongs to black people. I was like, what? And so, um, you know, Nick Cannon, um, you know, he's in trouble for things that he said, you know, I had an entire community, it pained me to my core, I thought it couldn't get any worse, then I watched my own community turn on me and call me a sellout for apologising, good night, so Nick Cannon basically no winning there, yo, have this planet, I'm out, see you later, Nick Cannon, after you took an L uh, from yourself for when you dissed Eminem, and these guys have had, you know, really bad, you know, last year, year or two, Stormzy getting bodied, uh, I mean, Wiley getting bodied by Stormzy, Nick Cannon getting bodied by himself, um, and so I just... I don't know, you know, Viacom, CBS ended a decade-long relationship with Cannon this week after he joined controversial hip-hop fi um, figure Professor Griff um, on his episode, um, and an episode of the Cannon's Class podcast where they turned to black people as the true Hebrews and included anti-Semitic conspiracy theories like Jews run the world, um, you know, own everything and things like that. Who do you think makes the laws, you know, sneaky Jews, all the powerful, you know, they're all powerful and all this stuff. Um, Nick Cannon said Griff was speaking facts. Um... And Amber Flyd Griffs used that Jewish people controlled um, the media, likening it to the power of the Rothschild family banking um, Sions, I think that's how you pronounce it, who have been um, targets of anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. And what they do is they're playing on the conspiracy theory that, you know, Jewish people are manipulative, manipulative and sneaky and they're out to get you. So what that means is, you know, you can't, you know, what they're trying to make it out like is you can't trust Jewish people and therefore you shouldn't work with them. You shouldn't trust them because they're, they're going to stab you in the back which is absolutely stupid. You can't treat people like a monolith. You can't treat them that in a good way or in a bad way. There are, you know, there are, you know, you have Jewish people like Ben Shapiro and you have Jewish people like Sam Cedar and David Pakman, two completely, absolutely different types of people right there. So to monolith them is absolutely stupid. You know, instead of treating these people as a group, treat them as individuals like they deserve to be. Why they wouldn't want to be treated as, you know, or he's just, you know, promoting, you know, crime and all this stuff in his bars and, and drugs and all this stuff, you know, while he's an individual, you know, and it makes me sad that, you know, a guy who helped to, you know, push and create a genre has fallen like this. And so if we go into the, um, the last kind of thing, uh, the last few things I want to talk about is the fact that, you know, they, people are right in the fact that Katie Hopkins wasn't punished for a lot of the things that she said, you know, she goes explosion in France, shooting at a German hospital, knife attack in London and Ramadan has not begun yet. So that's a blatantly an anti-Muslim dig. Um, she also committed libel on Twitter as well when she accused um, Jack Monroe of um, scribbling on, of vandalising a uh, monument or a memorial. Um, she got libeled for that and that's how she lost all her money. Um, you know, this this one's one of her ones where she can get away with these ones because it's a bit harder to put the... You, you can tell what she's trying to say, but it's very hard to say that, you know, she is being racist in this one. We all know she is being racist, but it's harder to say that she is, if that makes sense. Like, this one's a dog whistle essentially and so again no competition you can't buy class so this is a picture of um kate middleton and this is obviously Meghan markle which you know they both look fine i guess um you know and um someone tweeting you can't buy anything because she went broke because of um the libel case um you know also you know you got some fat shaming here um you know black people if your lives matter why do you shoot so why do you shoot each other so much you know um you know her mocking the things like the black lives matter movement and um you know there, there is some blatant like this this stuff here blatant islamophobia phobia and if she said this about jews um you know then i think the situation would be different of course anti-semitism is different treated differently to other kinds of racism which i think is it makes sense because of obviously things like the holocaust and um jews being treated um differently historically but at the same time you know when people come out with things like that are islamophobic and things like that they should be um you know discussed um, they should be talked about these people in a similar vein to if someone said anti-Semitic things. You know, they banned Wiley for for life. They they banned Katie Hopkins, but they weren't specific in what she actually did. Um, but I think it's just like them realizing that well, they can't ban other people if they don't ban her. And so she said, Palestinians busy uh, knifing Israelis, two-state solution. Uh, my ass, filthy rodents burrowing deep beneath Israel. Time to start the rebombing campaign. This is the bombing campaign that killed. Um, you know, that was a potential war crime according to the UN, and um, also led to children being killed um, at a beach. If anyone remembers that. 
and Israel exonerated himself. Obviously, it was going to do that. You know, no one. Um, you know, if I if I say, oh, I've done something wrong here, I'm gonna investigate myself. I'm gonna be like, well, I've done something wrong. You know, it's just stupid. Um, and so this this is essentially the the thing that Wiley did, which was probably the dumbest thing, where you know he was blatantly blatantly anti-Semitic, and he announced it like this. <laughs> You know, re replace the word testing with I'm a massive anti-Semite and I I don't like Jewish people because I had an argument with my record label. So yeah, I think this will wrap it up. Um, I do think that the people like Katie Hopkins and um, what's the name? Uh, and um, uh, what's the EDL guy's name, man? I'll, I'll put his name up in post. I've got his name. Uh, Tommy Robinson. That's it. Tommy Robinson. You know, when they put out stuff that can be seen as racist, you know. I think they should get reported. And Wiley had police go to his house and that kind of um, solidifies his view that, you know, Jews do run things because when he says something against Jews, um, he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I've got police at my house. So I might get arrested for incitement. Um, you know, but then these other people, that doesn't happen to them. And so I think that's something that, you know, people need to really figure out here. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, Wiley was wrong for what he said. Um, you know, anti-Semitism is obviously wrong when you, when you group people like that, especially... A group that has been vilified by um you know by you know countries societies for um centuries um you know what did you think was going to happen Wiley I don't understand his thinking I don't understand if he was you know on stuff that he should not have been on it's affecting his brain we all know that he's had um you know he has a bad habit I don't know if he's still got that you know this guy who's given an MBE and he's like well I don't have my MBE my uh, you know my manager has the MBE like why don't you have it like what what was the argument about specifically that's what I want to find out but you know what Wiley did is absolutely wrong um you know I think there's a picture here with his um with his MBE um and so yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. This video has rambled on long enough. You know, Wiley, you're an idiot. Um, and I'm glad Stormzy bodied you, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.